Welcome back to another episode of Bad Axe Bourbon. I'm Bobby. As you know, I'm still on location, so we're changing it up a little bit. Gotta get back into my content case. Be right back. Oh yeah. Let's see what we got. Just remember, uh, let me go ahead and uh, remind you of what I got in here. We got my Frey Ranch Single Barrel, Yummo. We got our uh, Jack Daniel Single Barrel Barrel Select, Yummo. Red Breast 12 Year Cask Strength, good too. Kentucky Owl Wise Man, like I said, that's the entry level price wise into uh, Kentucky Owl, about 50 bucks, just under 50 bucks actually. And I just did this video on this dovetail. Bad axe dovetail. The proof is up. Flavors popping with that proof. Highly recommend. Barrel bourbon dovetail. Anyway, what we're gonna do today here? I have not ever done, and this is the only one I own, Irish whiskey. If you drink whiskey at all, you probably know of red breast. Go ahead and uh, take that suck out right there. We're gonna do that one. All right. So put the sucker away. And thank you very much to Danny and Elisa Cruz for hooking me up with these uh, Glen Cairns from Frey Ranch. These are part of my travel content kit now. Thank you very much. These worked out perfectly and they were just in time, right on time. Thank you very much. All right, we got Red Breast right here. Irish whiskey. Red Breast Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey. Cask Strength, aged 12 years. I'm a novice. I'm a novice of all of it, really. I've just been doing it and got really interested into the bourbon and American whiskeys and, and the rice. So I'm still, obviously still learning a lot on, on all of those, just having fun doing it. Thanks to you guys letting me have fun, watching this sucker run his mouth. But this, people seem to like. And I did, there's this place, shout out to uh, Hops and Scotch in Walnut Creek, California. That place, I taste a lot of stuff there. They got roses up. I had a pour of that Russell's Reserve 13. Man, that is delicious. That might be the, that might be, I'm gonna say it might be the best one I ever had, but it's my, my memory. The best, my best memory is uh, Stag Junior Batch 12. That's gonna be my, my best memory, or at least as far as flavors. E.H. Taylor, small batch, plays a little part in this in my whole story anyway. Shout out Ricky King, shout out Tony Nochi. Was if you didn't buy that thing and bring it to Christmas, I wouldn't have stole it from Ricky King and started this whole journey. Thanks both of you guys. So let's jump back over to this red breast uh, cast strength. So this is 115. Proof, just over 115 proof. So I had a pour of the Red Breast 27 year. Man, I don't know if you ever seen that in a store. I've seen it behind a cage and lock and key, but that's like 500 bucks. Four, I've seen the range of four to 500 bucks for that thing. If you got a different price on it, uh, let me know, but that's what I've seen it for, at least in the store. I haven't checked online on that thing, but. But it was good. I had it to, at Hops and Scotch. I had it when I had that Russell's Reserve uh, 13. That Russell's Reserve 13, I have nothing bad to say about that. But the, that 27 year red breast was <laughs> what I remember really good too. That's two great ones I had right there. But let's go ahead and get into this uh, red breast uh, 12 year cast strength. Instead of yapping about it, let me start sniffing this thing.
But see, it smells light for cast strength, just over 115 proof. It smells light. I'll do some more research on that single pot still. Let's get your old sniffer going. Man, it smells light. It's uh, some, uh, you know what? It smells like a little bit of like dried fruit, cinnamon, spicy. Not spicy, not like hot spice, but like a cinnamon, you know. Cinnamon's not a hot spice, it's just a, it's a flavor. That's the aroma I get. I guess when I taste it, I'll get some flavors, some notes. Yeah, leaves, you know, like a, not a bad way, but like autumn leaves. A uh, little bit of, not vanilla, no. no. It's not that vanilla caramely flavor, but it's a light flavor. You can see it's, it's light, it's 12 years too. It's got good legs. It's not quite as viscous as I would I would like it, I guess. We'll have to see when I take a few sips. See how it goes. I, I remember that I like it. It's an easy sipper. I mean, it, it looks that way. Just uh, I'm looking at it just because it's so light. But it's got that hundred, just over 115 proof. That's what boggles my mind, as hard as that may sound, a little bit. Well, I'm getting into sipping this sucker. Yeah, it's so light. I mean, a little bit of ethanol, but they all have a little bit of ethanol. This is not overpowering at all. The flavors aren't. Flavors. The aroma, the notes aren't popping. Especially when you got proof that much. At least for me, it seems to enhance at least the uh, aromas, the notes that are there. That's not really happening. There are a couple of good ones though. Dry, yeah, you know, now, see now, it's just burning off a little bit, a little bit of a dried fruit, candied fruit, a little bit, those little bit of, still a little bit of cinnamon spice. All right, so going for a sip. stars burst no not, not those nasty yellow ones no one needs a yellow starburst if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have a starburst I have a pile of yellow ones which you start with the with the red the cherry then you go to the orange and then those yellow ones right Ooh, I'm sorry I skipped strawberry go from the, the cherry to the orange to the strawberry to the yellow Lemon, I guess. Lemon, more like tastes like lemon pledge. But I digress. This has a little bit of that orange starburst, or like an actual clementine, or like when you peel a clementine, or an orange, I guess. It's kind of the same smell, aroma for me. When you peel it, get that little bit of a spray, you know, that fresh orange spray hopefully you don't sting your eye but it's that that smell that fresh citrusy smell that's the if you can relate that to a flavor on the palate on the back of the tongue that's what i'm getting mm. you know what the viscosity is not there but the flavor is pretty good it goes all it coats my my tongue but what i will say is it's not lasting it doesn't last and it kind of now, it kind of turns a little bit tank. I mean, it's good there initially. It's, it's really good there initially. On the tip of the tongue, sweet, spreads out across the tongue. 
with that that orange starburst clementine type of taste starts going down the back of the tongue starts getting a little little tannic it's not warm I mean, you can feel that you can know that there's a uh, some proof in it but it's not overpowering it's, there's not a lot there's really that's about it there's not a lot to it not a lot to it it's not bad i would sip this it's good i mean it's it's good there's just not a whole lot going on it's pretty straightforward i would say yeah i got nothing bad to say oh they're all good they're just not explosive at all i'll say i'm glad i have it but i want to try that uh the is that lestal and there's another one that i i hit in my uh stores yesterday at uh, liquor barn if you got a recommendation on uh red breast or another irish whiskey they think i could handle that's like we're on the sweeter side you know and if the proof brings out some flavors if anyone wants to explain if that uh, single pot still does anything for this, let me know in the comment section. But I think that's it. I think that's a wrap on this one. Let me see if it gets any better on the, the fifth sip. No, it's the same. It's, I, mean, I gotta say, it's easy. There's nothing. Nothing displeasing about it at all. It's just not blowing up. And maybe that's just what the Irish whiskey is or does. But I do re remember that 27 year had a little bit more, had more flavor, lasted a little bit longer. And I was impressed with it. It's my only Irish whiskey that I own. I'm trying to broaden my horizon so I could do more of these videos and cover a wider scale. This, let's go with the axes, huh? One through five axes. I'm going to give, I don't know much about these, but just on the flavor, I'm going to, and you know, the nose and the, uh, the palate flavor, and I have really much else to compare it to in this category. But I'm going to go three. I'm going to go right in the middle there. I'm going to go three axes. Not bad axe. We got 27 year though, it was at least a four and a half, maybe a five. That might have been bad axe. I have to hit that one because I'm not buying that bottle, I'll tell you that. So we'll go three axes. Three axes. That's my uh, on location, out of my on location content case review of this Irish whiskey, the Red Breast Cask Strength 12 year single pot still. That's gonna do it for this episode. I'm gonna go out and do some more uh, Insta stuff, trying to blow this sucker up. So please watch the video. Tell all your friends. All the episodes are free. Please like, uh, comment, and subscribe. Hit that little thumb. That helps a lot. That's gonna do it for this episode. I'm Bobby. Like we say on this channel, sharing good bourbon with friends and family is bad axe. Till next time, thanks for watching. Or you got some scotch you want to tell me about? Something that's easily or transitionable from Irish whiskey, bourbon to scotch. What's, what's an easy one to get into that's not all peated? I prefer to ease into it non-peated man that stuff gets me mm -hmm.